السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله الأمين أما بعد All praise and thanks be to Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is our creator, sustainer, nourisher, protector and curer. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shower his choicest of blessings and salutations upon our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his family members, his companions and all those who tread upon his path with utmost sincerity until the day of Qiyamah. MashaAllah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless this gathering and may He the Almighty bless each and every one of us and likewise may He bless the viewers of the Daily Reminder Network. Ameen. InshaAllah, for tonight's heart softener, we will be touching on an extremely important topic. A topic so important that it is basically the foundation of all of the ibadah, of all of the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of all of our righteous deeds. A topic so vital that without it, our ibadah, our acts of worship, our righteous deeds, nothing are accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is so important. And the topic for tonight will be inshallah ta'ala, al-ikhlas, sincerity. Before we proceed, I wish to put forward a disclaimer, and that is, I swear by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that I do not deserve at all to touch on this topic. But nevertheless, being a student of knowledge, I feel that it is upon me and it is a responsibility upon me to convey the message. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive all of our shortcomings, and may He the Almighty hide our shortcomings, and may He the Almighty beautify our withins just as how He has beautified our exterior appearances. Ameen. Ikhlas is an Arabic term which stems from the root Kha Lam Sad. Kha Lam Sad. Khalasa, which means to purify something or to cleanse something. And in general, when you take any term in the Arabic language, especially in the books of fiqh or in the books of hadith, generally the Arabic term has a Logatan translation and a istilahan translation. Let me explain. Logatan in the sense a literal translation and istilahan means a technical, conventional or a shari'i perspective translation. For example, if we take, take the term salah, Salah in its literal sense, in its logatan sense, that is literal sense, means dua or invocation. But as for its istilahi meaning, its shari'i perspective meaning, salah is a set of prescribed actions which begin with the takbiratul ihram, that is the first takbir, and ends off with the taslim, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. So likewise, ikhlas too has a logatan definition and a istilahan definition. So let's first swiftly cover the Logatan definition. The famous lexicographer Ibn Mandur mentions in his famous dictionary, Lisan al-Arab, the tongue of the Arabs, that ikhlas, in other words, khalasa yakhlusu khulusan wa khalasan, means to purify, to purify, to be protected, to be purified, to be chosen. And from that stems another word, mukhlas. Mukhlas means a person who has been protected, who has been chosen, who has been purified. And look at the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam. The story where the lady of the house where Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam was a slave in, she tried to seduce him. She tried to seduce him and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the story and he states, كَذَلِكَ لِنَصْرِفَ عَنْهُ السُّوءَ وَالْفَحْشَانِ إِنَّهُ مِنْ عِبَادِنَا الْمُخْلَصِينَ كَذَلِكَ لِنَصْرِفَ عَنْهُ السُّوءَ وَالْفَحْشَانِ And thus, thus it was that we should avert evil and immorality away from him إِنَّهُ مِنْ عِبَادِنَا الْمُخْلَصِينَ Indeed, he was from our chosen slaves. Mukhlas, he was from our chosen slaves, our purified slaves. And then look at where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the statement of Iblis in the Quran, where Iblis stated, Fabi'izzatika la ugwiyannahum ajma'een. 
إلا عبادك منهم المخلصين يا الله by your might إبليس stated this يا الله by your might I will misguide all of them إلا عبادك منهم المخلصين except for your chosen slaves الله أكبر مخلص in the sense chosen purified protected and then the next term مخلص with a كسرة we discussed about مخلص and now مخلص مخلص means a person who has beautifully adopted إخلاص in his life a person who has beautifully brought about إخلاص in his life he is known as a مخلص now having covered the لغتن part of the literal part of ikhlas, moving on to the istilahi part of ikhlas, the conventional definition of ikhlas is, it doesn't differ much, it means to purify all of your actions, to purify your deeds, to purify your worship with the correct intention away from all types of shirk, away from all types of shirk. And shirk is of two types, shirk akbar and shirk asghar. Shirk Akbar is to worship or to associate something in worship other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To worship something other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or to associate partners unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Shirk Asghar is for example like Riya. Riya means to do something for someone else other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To show off to other people. To perhaps give out charity not for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but to be known as a philanthropist amongst people. To come to the masjid, pray in the first soft, to be known as a person who prays in the first soft. Not for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but for people. This is also known as a type of shirk. Shirk asghar, a small type of shirk. So we are supposed to purify our deeds away from all types of shirk, instilling in our hearts that every single thing we do, we're doing it for the pleasure, for the sole pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even our sleep, Allahu Akbar, even the sleep that we sleep at night, if we intend that we're doing it solely for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it becomes an ibadah, Allahu Akbar. It becomes an ibadah, your sleep becomes an ibadah. The relationship that you have with your spouses, if you intend it for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even the sexual relationships, Allahu Akbar, it becomes an ibadah. What a beautiful deen that we have got, Allahu Akbar. But sadly, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, ikhlas is missing in today's society. Everything is being done for name and fame, for publicity, for the limelight. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us all. And may He the Almighty fill all of our deeds with ikhlas. Because when we look at the lives of our Salafun al-Salih, the Sahaba, Ridwanullahi ta'ala alayhi majma'in, their lives were filled with ikhlas. Look at this story of Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. During his khilafah, Umar radiallahu anhu used to notice Abu Bakr radiallahu an every single morning right after Salatul Fajr, he used to rush away somewhere. Umar radiallahu anhu was very observant and he was very keen on knowing where is Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu rushing away every single morning. So one day he follows Abu Bakr radiallahu an for no other reason except that there was a very, very healthy competition between Umar radiallahu an and Abu Bakr radiallahu an in competition in doing good deeds. They used to compete one another in doing good deeds. Allahu Akbar. So he was very inquisitive to find out where Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu is going every single morning. So he follows him one day and notices him going towards the outskirts of Medina and entering into a very shabby tent and after some time coming out of that tent. So he notices Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu entering the tent and then coming out. So after he left, he goes into the tent, he enters the tent and he sees that there is an old woman in the tent. He says, Salam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. And then she replies, Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And who is this? She asks. He says, He says, I'm Umar. But I want to know who was it who came to your tent just a while ago? And what does he do in your tent? She says, I don't know my son. All I know is he is a good soul. He comes every single morning. And then he realizes Umar radiallahu anhu as she was talking that she is also blind. Allahu Akbar. An old woman, a frail old woman was also blind. She says, I don't know. He's a good soul who comes every single morning, cleans my tent, sweeps my tent, cooks food for me and for my little children because she was a widow too. 
He cooks food for my children. He washes my clothes. He arranges the tent and he leaves. Wallahi, I don't know who he is. Allahu Akbar. Umar radiallahu anhu, his throat chokes and then he says, Ya Aba Bakr, Wallahi Ya Aba Bakr, you have made the post of Khalifa extremely difficult for the person coming after you. Allahu Akbar. You have made the office of Khilafa extremely difficult for the person who is coming after you. Now let me mention a story about Umar radiallahu anhu. Umar radiallahu anhu during his Khilafa, he had this habit of patrolling the city at night. Many of you all must be aware of that. He used to have this habit of patrolling and checking on his subjects. He used to go perhaps in disguise so that people would not know it's Amirul Mu'mineen. People would not know it's Umar radiallahu an, And he would go checking things, checking uh, the situations of his subjects. So one night, he goes out, he passes by the outskirts and he sees a tent pitched out there. So he goes by the tent and he notices an individual seated out of the tent. A person he does not recognize. So immediately he determines that this is a traveler or a passerby who has stopped. So he asks him, Ya Rajul, oh man, what brings you here? What do you want? He says, it's none of your business. What's your problem? You go away. Umar radiallahu anhu says, no, I wish to help. Please tell me why have you come? Then he says, I have come to meet Amirul Mu'mineen, Umar radiallahu anhu. Then Umar radiallahu anhu asks him, have you ever seen or have you ever met Amirul Mu'mineen? To which he replies, no, I haven't, but I have some issues to discuss with him, and that's why I have come. Whilst they were conversing, suddenly a groan emits from the tent. And then Umar radiallahu anhu asks the man, who is that groaning in the tent? Because it was a groan of a woman. Who is it groaning in the tent? What is going on? Is someone in pain? To which again he replied, mind your own business and go away. Umar radiallahu anhu says, no, tell me, please, I can help you. Then he says, it's my wife, she's in labor. Allahu Akbar. Umar radiallahu anhu, a shudder goes through him. In my khilafah, there is no one to look after a lady in labor. He rushes back home. He rushes back home and he wakes up his wife in the middle of the night. Allahu Akbar. And he asks her, My beloved wife, do you wish to do a good deed and earn the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? To which she readily accepts and jumps out of the bed. Allahu Akbar. Look at the relationship between the husband and the wife. Today, if we try to go wake, wake up our wives in the middle of the night, we might get another reply from them. But then she jumps out and then he tells her what needs to be done. And while she gets things ready to help the lady in uh, labor, he goes and gets some provisions, some flour and things like that to cook some food. And both of them, husband and wife, they rush to that tent. And whilst Umar radiallahu anhu's wife was helping that lady in labor, Umar radiallahu anhu, he himself, goes and collects some firewood, lights up a fire, and then starts cooking some broth. He starts cooking some broth where he puts some flour and some meat and he starts cooking. All the while, the man who was seated on something was observing everything very quietly. He didn't make a move, he was just observing. After a while, now the broth is cooking, and then suddenly they hear the cry of a newborn. And then Umar radiallahu anhu's wife cries out, Ya Amir al-Mu'mineen! Allahu Akbar. Ya Amir al Mu'mineen, give glad tidings to your companion that he has been blessed with a baby boy. The minute that man heard the title Amir al Mu'mineen, he almost fell off what he was seated. Allahu Akbar. He could not believe Amir al Mu'mineen, the Khalif, the Caliph that I have come to meet, is seated on the ground cooking broth for me whilst his wife helped my wife in labor. He could not believe it. Allahu Akbar. But Umar radiallahu anhu, he did not do it for the name, nor the fame, or the publicity. He said, you come tomorrow and meet me as if nothing happened and I'll help you with your issue. Allahu Akbar. This teaches us how much our salafun salih our pious predecessors and the sahaba, Ridwanullah ta'ala alayhim ajma'in, gave importance to ikhlas. They did everything solely for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Solely for the happiness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So let us all learn lessons from the anecdotes of the lives of the Sahaba, Ridwanullah ta'ala, alayhim ajma'in. And let us also try our level best 
to adopt ikhlas. Let us rectify our intentions always in whatever we do. At the beginning of a, of a good deed, in the middle of a good deed, and towards the end of a good deed, that we're always doing every little thing of ours for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah the Almighty forgive all of our sins, and may He fill our deeds with ikhlas. May He fill all of our good deeds with ikhlas, so that we do everything for His pleasure. And may He accept our good deeds, and may He unite us in the gardens of Jannah, just as how He united us here tonight with our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa akhir da'wai, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Jazakumullah khair.